Council, Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. I'd like to welcome you all here and I'd like to call our meeting to order. Announcements today, we have a couple. We're going to start with congratulating Councillor Schramm and his wife Barb on the arrival of little Adeline that makes three grandchildren. He yes. has four more to catch up to me. Yes. Congratulations to the family. Thank you. Also, we have two more awards here given to Councillor Beck and Councillor Philipchuk in completion of their municipal leaders' roles and responsibilities from this summer. So I'd like to present that to you. Food Bank is the recipient for the Norman Falls Supper on the 20th of October uh, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. St. John's Lutheran Church is putting on the supper and uh, money does go to the food bank and to other uh, needy um, needs. Uh, there will also be another uh, supper at the uh, Seniors Drop-In Center on the first uh, uh, weekend in November and I will announce that in the, at another meeting but uh, the reason is for the fundraising part for the food bank because we are short of funds coming into the Christmas season <coughs> so thank you excellent everyone make sure you're there for a nice turkey dinner any other announcements Trevor no? okay I have one <laughs> okay um, I'd like to welcome Bruce Roche is that how I say it and Kristen Johansson from Sarita they would like to do a presentation with Mayor Spence. Good evening. Um, my name is uh, Bruce Roche. I've lived in the Saskatoon and uh, region for over 50 years. And during that time, I participated in a, a number of activities, political, sports, volunteer committees, that sort of thing. One such volunteer committee uh, was Sarita, where I thoroughly enjoyed myself as the regional rep and a board member for 20 years on the board of directors. When I left Sarita, they kindly created an award in my name uh, that would be presented annually to someone that showed outstanding commitment to regional economic development. This was the fourth year for this award. So some questions and answers pertaining to this, this issue, this award. Can you put a value on one's uh, uh, civic duty and volunteer participation? Are you able to determine one's positive influence in uh, difficult governance issues? How can you judge one's effective, uh, how can you judge the effect of one's enthusiasm and guidance towards a healthy economy? Can you evaluate the value of leadership that one shows in regional economic development? Well, yes, you can. We assess the impact of people all the time. And today we put a name to someone who has um, these qualities on display and has had for the last 20 years. The recipient of the Cerritos 2019 Regional Award of Recognition is Cheryl Spence. We sprang this on Cheryl a couple of weeks ago in Langham, um, and, and she was surprised, um, but um, she fit the award criteria perfectly. Um, so we thought we'd bring it to, uh, your, to her hometown and um, make sure that you were all aware of uh, what the region thought of uh, Cheryl by giving her this uh, award. So if you met Cheryl, you have met one of the uh, the most enthusiastic cheerleaders for the city of Warman and the Saskatoon region. And she wears that most valuable trait on her sleeve for all to see and hear. She has been a tireless advocate for business, education, recreation, and all those things socially beneficial to a strong and healthy community. Cheryl has made an extraordinary 20-year commitment 
and contribution to her community of Warman, to her role on city, uh, on city council, which includes being mayor for the last 13 years. During that time, Warman achieved tremendous growth, as you all know, uh, in all sectors, become Canada's fastest growing municipality at 55.1% from 2011 to 2016, as per the 16 census. Cheryl has always been open to share success strategies with her neighboring municipalities, so this naturally led to her leadership role in the P4G, the Partnership for Growth. That will soon be transforming uh, land development, planning, economic development um, policies on a regional governance basis. Cheryl's leadership uh, influence has been felt beyond economic development as chair of the FCM Standing Committee for increasing women participation in government and uh, the Indigenous Reconciliation effort as co-chair of the Prairie Rivers Reconciliation Committee. She's been a role model uh, on the FCM uh, Standing Committee to many uh, young women that have aspired and uh, have moved into uh, um, uh, roles in government. She has represented these and, and other views quite openly uh, in many public forums uh, and discussions over the years. And I've seen her in action and she has done the region proud. As I left the role of chair of the Sri Regional Committee after 20 years, it was a great comfort to me to have Cheryl bring her inspirational uh, approach to that role and uh, as a board member for the last four years. The region has advanced its influential role in the future under her leadership. Cheryl, so Cheryl, under, uh, on behalf of myself, the leadership and staff of Sarita, and all of your regional colleagues, two, two weeks ago, to around the table here, we are pleased to recognize you today and give you a big thank you for this leadership, uh, with this leadership uh, role for the region. So congratulations, Cheryl. Last week we were, we were in, uh, in uh, Langham and the backdrop was a uh, curling um, scoreboard. So we wanted to do something a little different. Um, so what do we want to do? Something that doesn't show. Uh, that has got two um, uh, blue and red circles on it. Oh, over here? Oh, okay. Let's over here. Corner there. You got, you got uh, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Oh, there you go. Corner. We'll go into the corner. Okay. Please tell me I had a different one. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say except that I'm surprised all over again. I was surprised a couple weeks ago and Krista had to try to keep it undercover. But thank you so much for this recognition. Uh, we can't do any of this work without all the people that are around this table and around that table. So I thank you for all your all your guidance and all your support and help over the years. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have another meeting of my own. I, I, I chose the most important one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. For Thank you. you. And you're lucky. <laughs> motion that the agenda for the October 15, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Okay, seconder for that. Councilor Beck. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, moving down to approval of the council minutes and committee of the whole minutes. Councilor Kocha. 
I'd like to make the motion that the minutes from the September 16, 2019 Committee of the Whole Meeting and the September 23, 2019 Regular <coughs> Meeting of Council Meeting be approved as read. I second it. Councillor Schramm, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, moving down to administration reports, starting with city manager. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm pleased to provide a report on the Partners for Climate Protection, which is a national network of municipalities committed to taking action on climate change. The program consists of five uh, step um, milestone framework that will guide a municipality on how to take action against climate change by reducing emissions in our city. Being part of this network, uh, it may provide us the ability to uh, and assistance to move our environmental master plan forward. Uh, all the membership is free to access the tools, case studies, and networking resources. There would likely be some funding for consulting fees to achieve some of these different milestones. The five milestones that would um, are suggested are create a baseline emission inventory and forecast, set emission reduction targets, develop a local action plan, implement the local action plan and monitor, monitor progress and report results. Uh, it's recommended uh, that uh, if Council is willing to become part of the Partners for Climate Protection through FCM, that a resolution be passed and submitted to FCM for membership. Councillor Schramm. I'm going to be it resolved <laughs> that the City of Warman review the guidelines on the PCP, Member Benefits and Responsibilities, and then communicate to FCM and ICLEI Canada its participation in the PCP program and its commitment to achieving the milestones set out in the PCP 5 milestone framework. Be it further resolved that the City of Warman appoint the following Bob Smith, City Manager, as the corporate staff person, and elected official Richard Beck, Councillor of the City of Warman, to oversee the implementation of the PCP milestones and be the points of contact for the PCP program within the municipality. I so move. Okay, a second for that. Councillor Tooley, is there further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. That is it. <coughs> Moving down to, that was a long one. <laughs> Moving down to our planning and development manager. Uh, Mayor Spence, members of council, a few items for discussion tonight. The first is bylaw 2019-14, the tax incentive policy. In mid-2019, Council tasked administration with reviewing the tax incentive policy related to new commercial properties. Council wanted the policy reviewed to determine if it was still achieving what the initial intent was. On August 13th, the City held a meeting with representatives from the development community uh, that included Warman Chamber of Commerce, Cage Developments, Avitex Developments, Crystal Clear Developments, and Kessler Agencies. Comments from the participants were that any follow further policy should be transparent, consistent in approach to business, assessment based or some sort of tangible number that is consistent, something that includes new investment both in terms of new construction but also renovations or significant additions, and an application process that should be clear and available to everyone or no application process at all tied to uh, an abatement or assessment number. Uh, first reading of the bylaw was held. Uh, first reading was held of bylaw 2019-14 at the regular council meeting in September. Uh, council then tasked administration with sending the draft bylaw back to the committee for further comment. The city, uh, the city received one short written comment, which uh, has been attached as Appendix A. A copy of the clean track changes bylaw is attached as Appendix B, and a clean copy of the new proposed bylaw has been attached as Appendix C. Uh, we've also attached a copy of the draft application form as a, Appendix D, which will become Schedule B of the bylaw. The recommendation before Council is that we proceed with second and third reading. Okay, we'll go with a uh, second reading. Motion, please. Uh, Council Filcher. I'd like to make the motion that bylaw 2019-14 be read for <laughs> second law. To a seconder. Councillor Schramm, any further discussion there? Councillor Filcher. I just want to thank you for the uh, application form. It's easy, straightforward, what we wanted, but I, I, I'm very strong feeling that, that, that we do need something like that. And, and really for the paperwork, but also for the need. It's, I guess, the ones that are going out and reaching out for this, then they've gone through all sources to see what's there. And I like how clear you made that. It is their responsibility within the bylaw. Thank you for those. Councilor Peterson. 
I I support the changes to the to the uh, tax amendment bylaw. However, um, I would accept for one thing, and that is the retroactive. Uh, I'm I just um, until I unless I see more information uh, as to you know uh, some of those discussions that went on and and who was told what I I can't support that part of it. And, so I guess as such, I can't support the bylaw as it is. Okay, any other discussion there? Okay, uh, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, uh, have three readings. Motion please, Councilor Beck. Yeah, um, I would like to make the, the uh, motion that bylaw 2019-14, the business incentive bylaw, be read a third time and passed, and that bylaw 2019-14 now be adopted, sealed, and signed mm -hmm. by the mayor and city clerk. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Schramm, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, no, thank you. Uh, the second item for discussion tonight is a discretionary use for a brewery at 1211 Bouchard Avenue. An application has been received, been received for a brewery to locate at 1211 Boucher Avenue, phase two. Uh, the application is considered a discretionary use in the M1 district. Notice was sent to property owners living within 100 meters and an ad placed in the local paper for one week. No concerns or comments were received. Uh, we do note um, that the overall parking on the site is starting to get tight, so we will have to take that into consideration with any new applications. Uh, the owner uh, is aware of that and we're in kind of constant communication in terms of future potential uh, tenants. Um, but they do meet the parking requirements for this particular use. Uh, a site plan showing parking configuration was attached as Appendix E and an interior layout of the proposed brewery is attached as Appendix F and a recommendation before Council. Okay, we have a motion. Councillor Peterson. I'd like to make the motion to approve the discretionary use for a brewery at 1211 Boucher Avenue. Do we have a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Philchuk, any further discussion? I just have a few questions. Now, a brewery, like, will it also host at times? So I guess I was looking at what type of numbers would be there. <clears throat> yeah. And so what is the parking requirement based on? So they do have a tasting room uh, as portion of the of the actual total development. And um, what we do is we take the square footage of just the tasting room to determine the parking requirement for it, and it comes out of that nine stalls. Um, which which they do have and I also note in my report that typical tasting times and I can't say all of the time 100% but typically those tastings are going to happen in the evenings uh, which are non-peak times for a lot of the other uses within the development and in addition there is a, a number of on-street parking stalls available to this particular development just because of the location and the width of the streets for those kind of special events where they may exceed that nine stalls. Other questions? Any other? Okay, all in favor? And the last and final item for discussion tonight is the discretionary use for a retail flooring store at 1211 Boucher Avenue. An application has been received, uh, sorry, for a retail store to locate at 1211 Boucher Avenue, Unit 5, in Phase 1. The application is considered a discretionary use in the M1 district due to the retail component. Uh, as always, notice was sent to property owners living within 100 meters and an ad placed in the local paper for one week. No comments or concerns were raised. Uh, I just note the parking comments made on the previous application as well. Um, and the proposed retail store will be selling flooring such as hardwood, laminates, tile, and carpet. Uh, and a recommendation before council. Okay, motion please. Councilor Philchuk. I'd like to mo make the motion to approve the discretionary use for a retail store at 1211 Unit 5 Boucher Avenue. Seconder please. Councilor Peterson. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk. Um, today is a summary for the strategic planning meeting that we has held on September 30th, uh, facilitated by Catherine Graba. Um, my recommendation is for City Council to approve the strategic mid-cycle review document, priorities for 2021, as presented, and further that administration be directed to prepare the 2020 budget to reflect the priorities in the report. Okay, do we have a motion? Councillor Schramm? I move that Council adopt the 2017-2020 Strategic Plan Mid-Cycle Review Summary Document. The priorities that were set 
for 2020 and to extend the date for the 2017-2020 strategic plan to December of 2021. Further, that administration be directed to prepare the 2020 budget to reflect the priorities presented in the summary report. So I so move. Do it a seconder. Councillor Beck, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Isn't it hard to imagine 2020? It's hard to imagine. <laughs> okay, a uh, motion to follow administration votes. Uh, Councillor Tooley. I can make the motion that administration reports for October 15th, 2019 be accepted and filed as presented. Second for that. Councillor Peterson, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay, moving down to Mayor's report. So we have in front of us um, a, lot of, a lot of pictures and a lot of things that have been happening around Warman. And we have one resolution, which is a very long, actually we have two resolutions, uh, one that is attached from FCM, and I need a motion there. Who's going to take a stab at it? Councillor <laughs> Bath? Yep. I'm going to start off with, uh, be it resolved that the City of Warman endorses the, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities election platform, which calls on all national parties to commit to modernizing how we work together to get even more done for Canadians. This would include renewing the roads, bridges, water systems, and other core infrastructure that support Canadians' quality of life by permanently doubling the gas tax fund transfer and boosting its annual growth to 3.5% to keep pace with construction costs. Um, also, building tomorrow's public transit by launching a permanent direct federal funding mechanism for 21st century public transit. Um, uh, by unlocking local expertise to cut commutes, lower emissions, and provide affordable access to everything from our communities, you know, to everything that our communities have to offer. Um, also, uh, tackling housing affordability by continuing to boost access to social and affordable housing for low-income Canadians, while engaging directly with municipalities to tackle the wider disconnect between rents, home prices, and income levels. Um, also, protecting Canadians from climate change by investing in local adaptation projects to protect families and businesses from extreme weather events while continuing to scale up support for local projects that can significantly help reduce Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. And by championing rural and northern communities by modernizing programs and funding tools to recognize the, the realities and, and expertise of smaller communities. Uh, uh, committing to to close the internet access gap and promoting local economic development. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have a seconder there? <clears throat> Councillor Tooley, any discussion? Councillor Schramm? Um, I, I would really like to make an amendment to this resolution okay. only because I, some of the things in it um, are very uh, their 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 ability to be applicable to our municipality is um, uh, I, I think that's the, that's the crux of it. I, I would rather have it I'd like the amendment would be that which of those things are applicable to our municipality we would be in support of um, because um, the public transit is. I, I guess it's going above and beyond uh, what's happening here, and we're endorsing it. Um, we're asking the party. Those things will not come to the, I guess I'm being negative now, but they won't, the public transit part won't come to our municipality in any, any near future. Um, uh, I mean, I like what it's saying. I just would like it to be more in, in tune with that which we are doing here in our municipality. Um, so I'm just uh, asking for uh, maybe some... Uh, uh, I would so... I can make an amendment, but I guess we'd have to vote on that amendment. Just at the end of... Um, the, the City of Warman endorses the Federation of Canadian Municipalities election platform to that which is... Um, 
uh, applicable to the city of Mormon. Um, I so move, I guess. Okay, well, I guess in it's saying here, if we complete it, they're talking about working together to get more done for all Canadians, so we're not talking about just Mormon, I guess, in this particular one. So are we, is the motion going to be about all Canadians, or is it going to be about Mormon? That's, so it's either yeah. that or sure. that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other comments? I guess point of order that whether there's a seconder or not for Okay. Discussion. Is there a seconder? Uh, well, there's a seconder over here, okay. Councillor okay. Peterson. So now we can talk about that. Now let's talk about it. Amen. Yeah, um, you, you know, certainly, you know, with the amendment, um, you know, I'm like, I think, you know, certainly in terms of supporting, you know, showing support for the Federation of Canadian, you know, municipalities of which, you know, uh, we are a member of, um, you know, this year, you know, like, I do think that it, that it certainly looks at, uh, at, you know, so like the broader scope. I mean, obviously, with this here, um, you know, I mean, there are parts of this, you know, that would be, you know, specifically applicable to us where, where others are. You know, say outside of our scope, um, you know. But for me, you know, this would be supporting, um, you know, say, you know, the whole entire motion, um, and you know, if, I mean, if this was just something that you know that only applied to Warman, you know, you know, then you know, then I would you know, certainly commit, uh, consider the amendment. However, because we are talking about the federal platform, I would keep it for all Canadians. Any other comments? I, I'd also like to speak against the amendment. I. Or I shouldn't say for sure. <laughs> really, with the 21st century public transit, I mean that's something that we're we're already looking at within 10 years. Uh, we're looking at what's happening in our area, what's <coughs> happening. Uh, so I, I think it's it is thinking big, and some of the things is how is it going to be funded for. So, so I, I think in some ways it's all applicable, and probably more so us than communities that would be way further out. But I think I think this is not far out of line with what we want. Anything else? Okay. All in favor of the um, the amendment? Opposed? Okay. Go back to the main okay. motion. So we'll go back to the main motion. Shall, um, shall I read it again? No. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> it. So all in favor of the motion? Opposed? Okay. Thank you. The next one, we have a motion for alternate uh, Deputy Mayor Beck to be appointed starting November 1st. Who can make that motion for me? Yeah. Councillor Tulip. Make the motion that Councillor Richard Beck be appointed as the alternate Deputy Mayor, effective November 1st, 2019. A second for that. Uh, Councillor Peterson, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Is there anything else from my report that um, we need to have any discussion on? Any questions? Waterloo looks fantastic. You know, in terms of <laughs> yes, how, it was. How that was so. Yeah, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of things going on. I also I just want to point out that picture for uh, Orange Shirt Day. That that looks amazing. The one Susan got up top there yeah. of that big circle and that huge gym. So. Well, you know, and I, would, I would also like to say thank you to, for all of council and the staff who attended. Um, it was a really good showing. It, it showed a lot of support for uh, what we're trying to accomplish in our regional rural um, reconciliation. So thank you for that. Okay, uh, hearing nothing else, we'll move on to our youth council report that's there in front of us. Uh, Janelle couldn't be here tonight. But there is the report, so if we have any questions, I guess we can, we can contact Janelle to ask her. Other than that, we can have a motion to file both those reports. Councillor Beck? Yes, I'd like to make the motion to file the mayor, pardon, the mayor's and the Youth Council, Council representatives' reports as presented for October 15th, 2019. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Peterson? Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Council Roundtable, let's begin with Council Gorchuk. Well, a few things. Uh, since our last meeting, I'll just mention a, a couple of them. Had a couple volunteer uh, awards uh, presentations, which is always nice.
those are very positive. Tried to keep it short and sweet, and uh, a lot of lot of interest in the changes there. So uh, thanks to Don for arranging those and uh, getting us all out there. Hopefully everybody gets a chance to do some of those. Uh, Friar Rescue Media had a chance to go to that. Um, exciting to hear about you know all the students that. Uh, they're open up the fire hall too, so it's they have all these people going through it as the report, uh, and also hearing from Russ that some of the discussion that's happening about the response times with the uh, ambulance and, and it's not just a warming issue; it's it's a it's a provincial issue and it's really something that needs to be addressed and uh, and it's it, they're they're really looking really brainstorming from their level but taking it to the next levels along the way, knowing that there's some restraints in place that have to be looked at. So I'm looking for recommendations with that. Yes. I just heard from Saskatoon Health Region today from the Executive Director and they're planning a meeting to talk about those things. So. Excellent, excellent. Uh, the Dine and Dance was another great event. Uh, all the chance to network. Uh, had a regional reconciliation meeting. Uh, it's moving along, but it, it, there's, we're hitting some of those areas right now that we're seeing some challenges with. So hopefully that just keeps moving forward. Uh, also looking at the conference, I went to the, the, uh, the conference in uh, Moose Jaw, uh, sorry, not Moose Jaw, in Martinsville on rural reconciliation. And that's a free, free one. I know that it, it also happens to be the same day that we had the, the SUMA one this year. So it's too bad because it really is one of the best ones around. And, and I, I want to say that I saw at least 75 people from Warman at this. And some of them were our students. We had uh, 50 students that came in and made, did a great job. They did a great job. And there's 380 people at this conference. So again, free admission, all through sponsorship. And I really want to recommend that Warman gets on and maybe budgets at thousand dollars at least a year to put towards that, because with that much representation, I had had people that came up to me and, and said, "What a great conference!" I I always want to find out more information from different levels. So the chamber was represented, seniors were represented, students were represented. So a lot coming out of that, and it's now become an annual event. We hosted last year in Warman, this year in Martinsville. I do have uh, programs for everyone if people want. There's some extra ones left over. I didn't get print them out, so I didn't waste any paper with it. There's some extra ones left over, but a very good day. Really top-notch speakers and breakout sessions this time. So they moved it up another level, and they're already starting to talk about what it'll look like next year. So exciting times in that area. And let's see. That's it. I think that's all I need to say. Councillor Sharma. Thank you for leaving me something to say. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won't uh, uh, or over do the things that he's all, the things the dine and dance and so forth. Um, for me, yeah, the day of service, um, I was the uh, this was myself and the mayor. Uh, I went up, uh, did some picking up of trash, uh, found some interesting things. I found. Uh, uh, cords to to my Mac products. Uh, I found a uh, a bottle of uh, whiskey. Um, I, um, uh, so it was quite interesting. I had uh, two full bags. Uh, I, for the most part, our where we where I we went as a group. Um, our city streets were quite well taken care of. It's it's uh, our parks and around the school. It gets a little bit more. Um, a little more garbage, but uh, it was a good a good day. It was great to have the students from Great Plains College uh, doing that, and uh, and we really you saw the pictures there in the mayor's report. Um, I uh, also took part of the SUMA webinar on uh, on the federal election. Um, not mo uh, I'm just telling you that I did that. Uh, the regional oversight committee, the ROC committee. Um, we met on Thursday, and uh, there's some interesting challenges that will take place as we get to the next steps, and hopefully hopefully we will see some support from the provincial government in finances for that, because we are blazing the trail as a committee, and uh, I think it's, in, it's, uh, it's vital. It is truly bringing regionalization and partnerships to another level, and... Uh, it's been nice to see this uh, be a uh, kind of a 
a guidelines for other other places in the province. Um, other than that, I was at the Orange Shirt Day, of course. Uh, I enjoyed our strategic planning, and uh, I was unable to go to the Suma, Suma Day because of the birth of my new grandchild. So that's, uh, other than that, I just want to say that uh, you can just uh, uh, support the food bank. We are in, um, we're in need, and uh, we just see the, the writing on the wall. There's also a, a couple of ministers that are moving out of town, and uh, so that uh, creates a, a bit of a, um, a lack of uh, participation somewhat from the ministerial, so we're kind of uh, uh, concerned. Um, so if you can remember us uh, from now till Christmas, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Peterson. I too would like to thank Don for setting up a couple of the meetings I got to go to uh, to, pre to present about the volunteer awards, about the, the Optimist Club and the Cadets. Um, the Optimist Club, uh, the four ladies that were present for that meeting were all extremely excited to hear to hear about it. Uh, lots of questions and uh, they all made notes in their day planners to be there for, for the event. Um, the cadets uh, was more the parents I was presenting to in order to, uh, you know, to encourage uh, them to support their kids to be there at the event and and um, and the C I talked to the CEO after and he was extremely excited to, about the uh, about the awards banquet and making sure that uh, uh, that they were gonna be it was, he was gonna have a good contingent there and um, maybe even. He might be someone to talk to about helping, you know, with the event itself as well. He's he's really, really wants to push uh, his cadets to do even more volunteering. And I've seen him at, qu at quite a few events in Mormon. So, um, so both presentations were very well received. I, you know, got good information to you know to hand over from Don. So uh, that was really good. And uh, just wanted to uh, say I'm looking forward to Wobi this weekend. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tooley. Um, would have been last Wednesday evening. I attended Warman Fire Rescue's open house and uh, helped do some serving with, uh, with some of the firefighters. I, I handed out several hamburger buns for a couple hours and concluded the evening by, um, I, I actually did the draw uh, for the um, well, the $15,000 gift certificate that they had for ProLine. You didn't pick my name. I did not pick the name, and I've, I've <laughs> taken some heat from a few people that I did not pick their names for. Um, but just congratulations to the winner. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe it was Matthew Marsh who uh, who won, and uh, it was a uh, good evening. Good. Thank you. Councillor Beck. Yeah, um, I'd certainly touch on some of the things here that haven't that haven't been mentioned. Um, this year, I did host the Suma uh, Regional for the Northwest Region, uh, so that was October third. And, uh, you know, certainly at that there, we, uh, you know, certainly hosted a number of communities and we had 59 registered guests. So, yeah, so this year was certainly great to have people out. And, uh, you, know, you know, like there again, we did get presentations, you know, uh, certainly to do with, with building efficiencies in terms of uh, 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 green wave innovations. Uh, you know, they had certainly come out to, uh, you know, to uh, speak to us. And they certainly brought, uh, you know, through, you know, let's say like a really good engaging platform in terms of how municipalities and you know uh, can certainly reduce their uh, their energy requirements for for some of our facilities. Um, you know, especially like the high demand uh, um, energy users. They also presented a a opportunity where um, where existing uh, smart water meters could actually be utilized. You know, to actually notify you know residents of water breaks and things like that, mm -hmm. whatever. So. Um, you know, so you know, with that, um, like, I'm not sure if that would actually present an opportunity here in Warman uh, because it's uh, certainly um, available to be used with some systems, but but not necessarily all of them. So um, you know, you know, so, you know, like that might be something that uh, you know that we might ask our administration to look into uh, here into the future. But anyways, all in all, it was a really good uh, uh, regional event. It certainly gave great opportunity for you know for lots of networking and. And certainly to hear from uh, President Barner. 
Um, I did attend uh, the Warming Community Association um, to let them know about our volunteer awards. They were very excited uh, to hear about the changes and um, they're uh, considering, uh, you know, uh, being a sponsor, you know, for that program. So, so yeah, well, this year, you know, certainly the, uh, the changes that, as they've been outlaid are certainly generating uh, quite a bit of interest out there. So that's, that's really exciting, you know, uh, to hear and I wanted to share that with the rest of you. Um, I did attend the park ceremony. So uh, Kessler Park was named, uh, so that's basically the park there between uh, Crystal Springs and Zane Demetrician Park. And uh, the Kessler family were this year just so appreciative of the recognition and, you know, certainly going back, you know, um, you know, like in terms of, of like all of the, um, you know, the family's participation here in the community was, it, you know, they just, um, just really felt recognized and it was just a great event so i thank uh mayor spence for her you know for her presentation and we had some park staff out you know also and whatnot and and quite a few of their family members and yes uh it might have been you know uh certainly like cold air kind of blowing there and whatnot but i tell you everybody was warm in the heart so uh, i just wanted to you know to certainly thank cheryl for that and also you know for our you know for our naming committee for all the work there that they do um, you know because like it is uh certainly recognized by you know you know by the you know by the recipients um last week i did host the um physician re uh, recruitment and retention um so i with this year we will have a recommendation coming forward to council uh, so that will be presented at a future meeting and i just wanted to highlight that we have household hazardous waste day coming up and that is uh, this Saturday. So certainly this year, everybody with their household hazardous waste, whether it be paint cans or, or whatnot, uh, certainly bring that through and uh, bring your ID. We have to prove that you're a Mormon resident. So I will leave it at that. Okay, thank you, a lot happening. I did forget one thing. My son attends uh, Beavers here in Mormon. And this year, even though it's mixed between Mormon and Martinsville, kind of like the cadets, this year, most of the attendees are from Mormon, and uh, all three of the, uh, of, the, of the scout leaders for the program are from Mormon as well. So when I drop him off next uh, Tuesday, I will uh, make a presentation for them. Good. Okay, moving down to correspondence, uh, we have in front of us the RCMP media releases. Uh, we have the Waste Reduction Fall Workshop, letter from Beverly Fitzpatrick, donation request from the Ministerial Association. We have all the um, pertinent information there, and we'll, we can start with some motions. We have the first motion, Councillor Philipchuk. I'd like to make a motion for Councillor Richard Beck to attend the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Fall uh, workshop in Melford, Saskatchewan on November 14th, 2019, cost of $100. Seconder for that. Com uh, Councillor um, Schramm, is there any further discussion there? All in favor? Okay, next motion. I need to declare interest here at this. Okay, so. <coughs> okay. Councillor Peterson? I'd like to make the motion that the City of Warman approve the request of the Warman Ministerial for the Warmer Community Carol Fest to be held on Sunday, December 1st, 2019, through a donation to the association. Seconder, please. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Councillor <Beck. laughs> Any further discussion there? All in favor? Okay, you can let them back in. <laughs> Next motion. Sure, I'll make the motion that the RCMP media releases from September 16th to October 7th, 2019, uh, the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Fall Workshop invite, the letter from Beverly Fitzpatrick, the donation request from Mormon Ministerial Association, and the letter from Mormon High School Art Class be filed as correspondence for October 15th, 2019. Okay, so we have need to move back one though first. Yes, because okay. I think one was actually... <clears throat> missed there. Do you want to make that or? Uh, that I one? will go ahead and make the motion for sure. So, um, <clears throat> before we do that motion there that I read, uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, go back and um, uh, present a motion that council approve the Warman High School art classes and 
and their request to put up a painted mural at 101 Classen Street West, um, otherwise known as the Old Library Building. Um, and Council uh, requests that they approve the concept drawing of the mural prior to the mural being painted and displayed. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Schramm. And I did send to you an um, email today from the Chamber of Commerce with their comment. And I think they would also like to have a little bit of say there, and I think that's fair. And we will also be getting uh, confirmation from Route 11 on this one. So I just want to make sure everyone is aware. Do we... Uh, so, so with that there, we, we would amend this motion to include the, um, the Chamber of Commerce approval of the design. Or we just... We don't approve it until we've got their approval. Yeah, like, well, I think that we would approve it ba oh, based, uh, based on, on, their on the conversation okay. with them. Okay, so no need for the amendment. No. Any further discussion? Yeah, um, you know, certainly with this, um, you know, this, I mean, I'm like, I do have a few questions around this, um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, so that this mural is it going to be painted right on the building or is this going to be, let's say, painted, um, you know, let's say, you know, plaque and then that they're attached to, you know, to the building. So um, have we done any investigation as to how that, that, that attaches or if there's any, um, you know, let's say, service agreements in terms of upkeep or how long that that may be? Well, there's one on the other side that was done without our without mm -hmm. our consent, and it's it's probably going to be done in about the same way. They do it on a piece of plywood. The plywood's applied to the building, and then it's a easily movable. And so I think we did send a message around to council. Do we not about what that looks like? Did anyone have, get anything I from have, yeah. what Ray Knightley has done in other communities? Well, I think a while back we did. Yeah, because he, he has done this in other communities, and they actually put it on a piece of plywood. That plywood then is uh, fixed to the building, but it's easily movable in case you want to move it elsewhere. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, so I guess with that there, you know, just as long as, um, you know, like it's not going to cause any damage, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, to our building. Um, and then also with this here, I take it that there's no liability for us to maintain the, you know, let's say like the rendered drawings mm -hmm. or anything like that. So. I think once it, if it became tattered, it would come down. Okay. Yeah, you know, like there again, like those are my concerns. You know, okay. that kind of so. I did a bit of checking into the upkeep and how that works. And I know Saskatoon's got a team that sort of goes around and moves things around <clears> and <throat> they treasure their art that's around their community that way. And 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 I think as as mentioned, if something becomes, you know, where there's any damage or wherever it might even be the number of times, or it's even outdated that that decision's made and, and you know you make change you either you either uh, fix it or you remove it at that point but it's not it's not something that y you let it it's like signs in a community that sometimes get tattered too and uh, it, it's same idea that it, at some point you make a decision about it okay. any other comments okay all in favor good Hey, now could I go to my motion that the RCMP media releases from September 16th to October 7th, 2019, that the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Fall Workshop invite, the letter from Beverly Fitzpatrick, the donation request from Mormon Ministerial Association, and the letter from the Mormon High School art class be filed as correspondence for October 15th, 2019. Okay, seconder, Councillor Peterson, any further discussion there? Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Other reports? Do we, do we have a motion to file other reports? Councillor Philipchuk? Make a motion to accept and file the turbidity report for September 2019, uh, the uh, Warman Public Library Board July meeting, and minutes and the Legends uh, Golf Course minutes from the August 15th and August 22nd meeting as read. Seconder for that. Councillor Beck, is there any uh, questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Okay, City of Counts, motion please. Councillor Tooley. To approve the City of Counts as presented by checks numbered 20975 to 24115. 
1,343,443 for the total amount of 1,340,201.55. And the payroll vouchers numbered 9660 to 9760 in the amount of 89,413.65 for October 15th, 2009. 19. Wrong okay. year. Mm -hmm. Behind like a decade. <laughs> A seconder for that, Councillor Filchuk. Is there further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay, thank you. And we have a special visitor with us tonight. We have David Buckingham, MLA for Saskatoon Westview. We welcome you here, David. And we wanted we we have you here tonight so we can officially thank the provincial government and the federal government for their contribution into Warman in the way of the grant funding that that has come down to us. I. I'm sure you're aware how this benefits our community. We are looking at doing some work to our lagoon. And as you know, Warman is one of the fastest growing communities in the province and in our nation. And this infrastructure will help with that growth. And we thank you immensely for, uh, for, for that, that funding that's coming into our community. Now, David, is there anything that you wanted to? Sure. Let's see if it's worth, for sure. First off, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, Mayor Spence, uh, city councillors, city staff, um, visitors, I guess. Um, I'd like to say, you know, first off, begin by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 6 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis. And I also want to make, and make a point uh, from the Governor of Saskatchewan to thank you, Cheryl, and congratulate you on your award uh, from Sweden. Congratulations. And I, I know you've uh, worked hard over the years, and uh, that's what it takes to make a beautiful province. So yes, I did want to be here too, to see how a meeting is run by the most successful council, in, I think, in the, in the uh, country. And so my hat's off to you guys and, and what you do, you know, that adds to our beautiful province and you become a great role model for all other municipalities. It's my pleasure to be here on behalf of Laurie Carr, the Minister Responsible for Government Relations uh, for Premier Scott Moe and the uh, rest of the government of Saskatchewan. And today I'm pleased to join with the City of Warman to celebrate the beginning of an important project. The upgrade and expansion of the City of Warman's uh, sewage treatment lagoon. The improvements to this vital piece of infrastructure will benefit this community and Saskatchewan as a whole for years to come. And why is that? Well, on a surface level, some might think of it as a strange thing to get excited about. But when it's not working, we all know how things go, go wrong. This is a project that will treat and manage wastewater and stormwater. I'm here to tell you this, that it's more than just that. And there are many reasons to be excited. One major reason is that our province and this city is growing. And it is opportunities and developments in communities across Saskatchewan, like Mormon, that are driving that growth. And increased capacity to handle essential services like wastewater and stormwater treatment mean that wastewater and stormwater can continue to be managed safely. That citizens can be better served in the present and that communities are able to grow and thrive long into the future. And that's why our government is pleased to provide over six million in provincial funding that will support the upgrade and expansion of Mormon's wastewater treatment system. This is one of several projects announced under the federal provincial agreement signed last October to secure 896 million in federal infrastructure funding for Saskatchewan projects over the next decade. This funding program supports projects that improve the health and safety of communities, support economic growth and sustainability, protect our environment, and contribute to a higher quality of life. And we will achieve these goals through targeted investments in northern, rural, and remote roads and airports, municipal and regional infrastructure, greenhouse gas mitigation, and culture and recreation facilities. In closing, I'd like to thank the Government of Canada for its contribution toward this project under the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. 
They are, they are a significant partner on this project. And of course, thank you to the City of Warman for your investment and vision in bringing this project forward for consideration under this infrastructure program. By working more co collaboratively together, our governments can make more efficient use of available funding. And ultimately, that allows projects like this one to move from the drawing board to reality. The government of Saskatchewan looks forward to celebrating future milestones with you and seeing all of the great things that your community is sure to achieve. So thank you again for allowing me to be here this evening and congratulations and I look forward to your project coming to completion. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to take this, this moment here to also thank our city manager, Mr. Bob Smith, and his team for all the work that they did to um, put the, uh, the, the funding application together. Uh, we know it took lots of time and effort, and we thank you for all that you've done to accomplish this goal for the City of Norman. So with that, can we maybe give a hand to the parties involved and say thank you. We're going to take a 15-minute recess, have a chance to talk with David, maybe take a picture with David, and we'll come back in 15 minutes to an in-camera. Okay? Uh,